Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook in the sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns mean pastures beautiful with my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life is a dream. Sing is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life. Hello, welcome back. So today I am going to start a project. Actually, it is nighttime. It's very dark outside and usually I try to start these in the morning, but I'm so excited to start cutting this one out because it just looks so happy and inviting and I just really like that right now. So this is it. It is this skirt. Um, you can see it better here where it is gored with two different fabrics. Okay, kind of looking boho-ish here. Very long. What I am going to be using is this very, very rose-colored fabric. Roses everywhere with black in the background for one of the colors. And I can't show you the entire piece right now because it is currently in the dryer, but it is going to be my black flannel, okay? They are, all, even though one is more of a calico and one is more of a flannel, they are both 100% cotton and they are both about the same weight. This is a very lightweight flannel. And so I think it's gonna work out really well. Um, so I'm gonna be having the roses as my primary color and then the gores, which are very big, are gonna be out of the black. So I'm excited to get started cutting this out. Um, I am going to have to shorten it though, because you can see it's floor length on this extremely young looking model here. Um, but I am usually much shorter than their standard length, but I do still want it to be fairly long. So what I am going to do though, is instead of taking my length off the bottom, I'm going to be taking it off up here because if, I don't know if you can see here, or maybe if I flip it to the little diagram, it might be easier to see. There's a lot of distance here. And with those sewed down seams, um, that might be a little bit straight for my large hips. So I think that if I take that extra off the top, it'll just make my gores start above hip level, then below hip level. And I think that that'll be fine for me. So let me open up the envelope. Okay, so first of all, what I did is I'm gonna want the bottom of my skirt to be maybe about that far off the ground, okay? So I held up my tape with my end of my tape about where I wanted it to be and at my hip, I marked where that point was, which is 36 inches, okay? That is gonna be a very nice dramatic length for me. And so this is the shape of the pieces, all right? Um, and so there it looks like there's different options as far as skirt lengths. There's shorter, medium, and then the super long. But from what I can tell, they're all taking their length off the bottom. So even though I want a skirt that is closer in length to view B, I'm actually going to be taking view C and taking my extra uh, four inches that I need to omit from up here in this part at the top, if that makes any sense. So this is, these are the main skirts that you see from the outside. So like the dark blue here is these pieces. And this is the gore. The gores are very, very wide, okay? And uh, so this is what I'm gonna be doing in black and this is what I'm gonna be doing in roses. Very excited. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my pieces out of my tissue paper. Okay, this should actually be a fairly easy, straightforward pattern to make, which is nice. So this is the casing. It has an elastic waist. So I'm not going to change that for right now. I'm just going to set it aside. 
these are the pieces that I need to shorten. Okay, and on this one you can see that the hip measurement for size 16 is 48 inches, which is nice. There's ease built into that because for a size 16 body, uh, they expect you to have a 40 inch waist, so they're giving you basically 8 inches of ease here. All right, I'm taking the amount that I need to shorten from up here. The view that I'm doing has a finished length of 40 inches. I need a finished length of 36 inches. That's where I get that 4 inch difference. Okay, so um, you have four pieces that are all shaped very similarly. So what I'm going to do is, for I'm going to show you on one, but what I do for one, I'm going to do for the other three also, you know, because they're all basically the same. Um, I'm going to line up my grain line arrow with my little grid underneath there, so I know it's on the straight. Put a weight there. Somewhere in the midpoint, I am just going to arbitrarily choose to make it here, you know. I'm going to line up. and. Because I'm doing this, it is going to throw off where my notches are. This isn't a, a hard thing to match, so I'm not going to stress about my notches, okay? But because I'm taking two in four inches off, I'm just going to line my ruler up someplace in the middle of this with the edge of the ruler along the grid there. So this is a 90 degree angle for my green line, okay? Fold my pattern down. This is a two inch ruler. So then I can fold it back up at the bottom of my ruler, Ooh, right about here, looks about right, okay, so when I pull this away, that is now four inches shorter, okay, because I'm taking this whole little bit in here out. So I'm going to put a piece of tape across here, even these cutting lines out, and this one will be done. And I'll be doing the exact same thing to the other three pieces. Okay, so I have it taped together here now. So what I'm gonna do is make a line from my top edge here down to, basically from 5 8 inch down from the top to 5 8 inch above this little notch there, okay? I'm just gonna line that up draw a line here and that is going to be my new cutting line. You know what, I'm just going to fold it under for right now, but that's going to be my new cutting line right there. Okay, so next day we've got errands to run, very exciting errands, but I'm going to try to get a couple things done here first. So all of these skirt pieces, they are piece one, two, three, and four. Um, I'm basically going to be doing the exact same thing to all of these first, which is first I need to mark, and I'm going to mark it on the wrong side, so I need to flip these around because one side is slightly paler than the other, but I need to mark where my, these little circles are. So like always, the way that I mark my circles is I have a little hole punch and a little piece of leather that I can stick under the tissue paper punch my little hole out, and then pretend that you're looking at the wrong side here instead of the right side. I have a little heat erasable ink pen that I can then just color in that little dot right here. I can just color in the little dot with my pen. Easy peasy, it is all marked, okay? So on each corner of these pieces, there is a dot. So I need to get those marked on each piece. Then. Up here at the top, again, I'm not marking these notches because they are all over the place because of my shortening, all right? What they want you to do is run a row of stay stitching across the top, which you can do. That is perfectly valid. But I am going to instead be ironing on a little bit of reinforcement, and the whole object of this is to keep this edge from stretching out of shape, okay? It's not really on a bias. It's not really, it's not really something that I think is going to be stretching, but you know, we're gonna play along. And what I am using 
It's not really a stay tape, but it is a stabilizer. You've probably seen this before. It is like a one inch wide strip of black muslin that has little fusible dots on here. So I am just going to iron on a strip of this across the top of each one. It's very thin, won't take any, any weight, you know, but if you want to run a row of stay stitch, do it at a half inch seam allowance, just a straight line across the top of each piece, okay? Alrighty, so I've got my little, um, strip fused and I was actually waiting to mark this until after I iron that on because heat erasable you know they will disappear but I'm noticing that I should have actually ironed my pieces before I did this because they were a bit wrinkled and when I iron it ooh, my pieces grew I'm not going to worry about that for this you know it is a flouncy kind of skirt so I'm just kind of shifting the pattern piece over just the main thing for me is to make sure I get these points here marked because that is the the point where the little black piece needs to meet up okay so if you can see here it is now on a pattern that is this busy what I like to do is draw a bullseye kind of circle around my dot because that makes it a whole lot easier for me to find later. So each one of these pieces, I'm gonna do this, iron it, fuse it, mark it. Okay, so the next step is to start sewing all of these together. And I'm honestly not too convinced that there's a huge amount of difference from one side to the other, if you see what I mean. But we're gonna try our best to do what they want. So I'm just gonna start with this front piece and this side with the double notches says center front seam, okay? So let me make sure. Like I said, their sides are extremely close, at least for this front piece. So I am just gonna arbitrarily say, this is my center front and start there. Oh, but you know what? This is a woven and it will fray. So before I sew all these together, I am going to serge around each and every one of these and my serging, I'm not going to worry about the top because that will be inside of a casing and it has the stay tape fused to it. But I'm going to serge down around the bottom and back up and end here on each of these pieces. Okay. Okay. So I have it serged around the edges now. Now, um, the next project is our next step is basically going to be repeated over and over and over. So what I'm doing now, I'm just going to keep on from here. The main thing is to pay attention and keep track of which piece you have. So you can kind of see here, I'm doing these two, the fronts, Minnesota here. And then after I have these sewed together, I'm going to get my side front pieces and pay attention to which side gets matched up to the front. Okay. So on the side front, you can see that there is a single notch down below and another one up above. So that is the notching system that'll match up here because otherwise it's going to look very, very similar. But the way that you sew them together is lining them up right sides together here. And I'm going to start pinning it up at the top and then down at the bottom here where we had our little dot that I made and circled. That's going to be the stopping point. So I'm basically going to be sewing this from this dot all the way up at five eighths of an inch and then press this seam allowance open. Okay. Once that is done, do the side fronts onto it. Once those are done, do the side backs and so on and so forth until you have a, an entire piece. Okay. I am over here at my machine. I'm using my 201 today. Lovely, lovely Singer 201 after those pants. I told my maestro I'd give her a break for good behavior. But I wanted to show you because all of these pieces look so similar, I am labeling them with my heat erasable pen. So these two are front pieces. So I'm just, you know, writing the word front on there just so I can keep track of them in case, you know, things get put aside. So uh, now these are my two front pieces. Now I'm going to go get my side fronts. 
sew them on exactly the same and then press them open just like this. So I just want to give a quick little look at the 201 here. If you've never sewn on one, crazy strong, crazy quiet, and so smooth. It's like a 1940s, 1950s Mercedes on cruise control if it existed. Amazing. She just hums. Anyway, this is her. She is from, I believe, 1943. I rebuilt her about a month or so ago. Love her to death. So um, this is my back. What I did is I did my front, my side front, put that aside, and I'm doing my back, side back. So then I have my two pieces that I can just put together and do the side seams on. All right, I am just about to sew my back piece to my front piece here and my little um, hand marked front back are disappearing like crazy. So I am just going to get one of my labels. I haven't used one in a while, honestly, and just pin it to my back section. So when I get done, I can sew it to my back section and then that way I'll keep it straight because these look very, very similar. So anyhow, here's my front, pinning it to my back, and I am just going to sew up the side seams now exactly the same way from dot to top and press it open on both sides. Okay, so this is what it looks right now. I just pinned it on here. The slits go up pretty high, but what I wanted to see if it was still long enough here because I took four inches out to give the right effect that I want, and I think it is. So I'm really happy about that. I think that um, with the gores in there, it's gonna be really nice. It's not gonna be like dragging the ground full length. I'm gonna have about that much room, but I think it's gonna be perfect, so yay. So far, this has been a very easy going process, and I like it, and uh, yeah, it's a happy one. What I am gonna do right now, before I go to the next step, is serge across the top of the entire waistband just to even everything out where I have everything sewed together and I think that that'll help just contain it in case it wants to fray. Earlier I thought I don't need to serge it because I have that stay tape fused on there, but at this point, I think just to even it out and make sure that those seam allowances are laying the way that they should so when I go to put the casing on, everybody's happy. So. That's what I'm going to do next. All right, so I just finished serging across the top, which makes it nice and clean. It also holds my seam allowances open, so that's a great step to do at this point. So the next thing, according to the directions here, is to start sewing in my godets or godets or whatever. They're inserts, they're triangular inserts, okay? Um, I cut out eight of them, exactly the same pattern. You know, there's eight of these big triangles. So before I start to sew them in, it is 100% cotton, it is flannel, so it will unravel. So I'm gonna change my serger thread to black because I'm kind of rocking and rolling with the white here right now. And um, I'm gonna change it to black and go around all of these pieces first just to have them nice and protected and surged on their edges. Now, as far as for the surging, what I would suggest, if you're gonna do this, is start up here at the top, at this extreme point, okay? And start surging here, come all the way down, be careful not to stretch as you go, because this is cut on a bias, so if you stretch it a lot, you might end up with some waviness, which is not the end of the world, just carefully iron it when you're done. But you can come all the way down here. At this corner is a lot easier to turn than the top one. So turn that corner, that one, and then come back up and just run off the edge at the top. That is gonna be the best way to serge this. So let me go ahead and do that. Once I have the piece surged, I am coming back and pressing it just to you know, even everything out because the rest of my fabric is pressed. So that'll make it a lot better and more even when I'm sewing it. Okay, so I have all eight of my black pieces surged around. And what I am going to do right now is mark this little top spot on each one. 
And since I am using some black fabric, I'm getting a little white chalk pencil here. And this dot is going to be matching up with our stitching um, on the flowered part. So that's the only part I'm really concerned with at this point. So I just punched my hole out. Draw. Oh, you don't even see that. So I just punched my hole out here. Stick my chalk pencil in. Draw my little dot. And that is it. So I'm going to go ahead. Can you even see that? A little dot there. I'm going to go ahead and do this on the other seven pieces. Right, so I wanted to show you um, my flannel is it's lightweight it's not the best flannel in the world and i pre-washed it but i did not iron it before i cut it out i have ironed it now so basically what that did is when i ironed it after i've cut it after i've surged it it did stretch it out a little bit so the way i am dealing with this is i am matching up the top corner where it's supposed to go down on each side and you can see like down here at the bottom I got a couple inches that it stretched once I have everything sewed on I'm just going to even that out it's the top part that I'm going to be worrying about okay so that's just because you know my flannel is not the best in the world and I ironed it after I cut it out so but Again, that does not bother me too much. So this is how I'm doing it. I have the point right here where my two uh, pieces are joined. You remember the very bottom part here is where a dot is, okay? Where this little line of stitching here ends. Ah, there's my dot, okay? This dot is what is matching up with the dot I just drew, well, it's just about disappeared here, right here at the 5 8 of an inch in um, on each side here at the tip of my little inset. So I am just sewing on one side and then the other. So what I need to do, because my, my flannel doesn't have a right side and a wrong side it just is i'm putting my floral fabric right side up getting my flannel with my little dot here matching this dot up with where the stitching is ending where that join is right here on my skirt okay with that matched Okay, so like here, there's where the stitching ends, all right, and the dot on my flannel is right there. Okay, so then I'm just going to start pinning it, matching up the edges, my surged edges, all the way down the whole length. Get this out of the way here. Just kind of matching it up, down, matching it up, down, matching it up, down the entire length pinning it as I go okay when I get it done I will stitch this entire length here up to that dot so I'm not going all the way up just to the dot and which is right here okay at 5 8 of an inch okay so at this point I have this side of it sewed all right so now I need to match up the other side so just the same way I'm getting this side of my strip and this side of my triangle, roughly laying them near each other here. Now up here at the top, again, I want to get the edge of my triangle and the edge of my strip to be in line up here at the top and at this point actually you can see where I kind of overstitched by one little stitch there and I'm making a bind so I'm just going to clip that okay so at this point you can see that's where this stitching line ends so once I have my first little pin there i'm actually going to put a couple little pins just to kind of hold it in place here for a second put two more 
going down the road. Okay. So looking at it from the strip side, and I'm looking at it this way because I can see really clearly where this stitching line is. I'm going to start my needle right here and at 5 8 of an inch on the edge, come down this way. Okay, so I'll be sewing straight down here, but I want to make sure I start right here. If you can see it on this side, and I can, you know, it's very dark, so showing you black on black is harder. Um, you can, if you have a lighter fabric, you can probably see it just as easy. But this is the point where this stitching line stops is where you want to start the new one coming down. And again, just get the edges matched up all the way down. For me personally, my black is going to be too long. Doesn't bother me. Again, I will trim it even once I'm done with all of them. Once I have this done, I have a insert that looks like this. What we're going to do is um, not press them open. We're just going to press it so that the triangle is always out. Okay, so when I go to press it, I'm going to press this out, this out, this out, and up at the very top, the triangle is going to be straight up like that. Okay, the seam allowance for this part will remain pressed open, but the triangle point is going to go straight up. Hello everybody. Welcome to another day. It's actually nighttime. I've been gone all day, but I wanted to show you what she's looking like right now. And again, I don't have her all the way around. She's just kind of pinned on here, but you can see the gores a lot clearer and how high they go. This is just a fun skirt. You know, sometimes you just need a fun skirt, but I can tell you it's going to be pretty wide. So very swooshy and I'm going to like that. Now, the only thing that we really we need to do at this point is there's a casing and it's going to go right across here an elastic insert and also I need to even out all of those black pieces that were a little too long on the bottom. Not a big problem. I'm going to take it off my dress form, put it back on the table and get started. Okay so we have a piece number six which is the casing. You only cut one of these. So let me go ahead and pull this off. I'm going to be matching it up end to end right sides together and I need to pay attention to where these two little dots are. Okay, so I've got my two ends right sides together. Come on, like this. And I'm just going to get one end. There's the little dots on both sides, but really I only need to mark one. These dots are going to mark where you do not stitch so that you have an opening to slide your elastic in. Okay, so I'm going to stitch from this dot this way and from this dot this way like that. See if you could see um, from here over there, there over there at 5 8 of an inch and that's going to leave a little gap in the opening to slide in the elastic. Okay, I have not marked any of this yet. There are some, you know, center front and all that marks in here. I haven't marked it yet. I have pressed my little seam open. Here's my little opening here. All right, what I'm going to do right now is fold it in half, right sides together. Once I have this done and this pressing done, then I'll make my marks because I don't want to erase them, you know. Okay, so I've got a nice crease ironed in. So I'm going to run over to my serger and serge around the raw edges all the way around just to lock them together and keep them from fraying because the uh, edge of this will be exposed the way that they have you assemble it in the pattern instructions. Okay, so on the pattern for this casing, it's basically marked into quarters. So if I fold these two in half, okay, at the other far side is going to be the marking for another side seam. And here, if I fold this in half, you know, with my little dots at the edge there, that's going to give me at this point center back and center front. It's just in quarters. So if I have my little seam with my little opening right here, if I fold it at that point and come directly across, I'm going to mark it. Let me open this up. 
mark a straight line here that's going to be the opposite side and then you know just folding that in half that's going to give me my center front and center back you know just kind of easier that way than marking things from a tracing paper so now let me go ahead and get my skirt now I marked what were my back panels, what were my front panels, I have my tag here, but honestly, I don't think there's much of a difference. I really don't. I don't see much of a difference at all. Um, I am, they want you to put this little opening on a side seam, and so I'm going to go ahead and kind of match it up their way. All right, I'm going to just totally mess them up and I am going to put my opening in the very back. That just makes more sense to me right now. So again, I am matching it up so the little opening here is like this where it's exposed. You match up that little seam to my center back. Stick a pin here. And then I need to pull all of this over. I'm going to go ahead and match up the center front and the sides. It should pretty much match up if I did this anywhere near correctly here. So let me go ahead and pin it all together, matching up center back, center front, and my side seams and everything in between. All right, I got it pinned all the way around. It matches pretty well. You know, there's a little bit of easing-ish here and there, but not enough to fuss about. A sewing machine will work it all in. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this entire seam on, I believe at 5 8 Yes, I'm going to stitch it at 5 8 once and then come back and stitch it again with a quarter inch seam allowance. So, okay, so let me show you what I've done and what I'm going to do. So first of all, in the instructions, what they say is they want you to do one row of stitching at five eighths of an inch and then a second row of stitching a quarter inch in okay all the way around and then they want you to come back and trim this edge just ignore that I have bad tension on that surging you know just ignore that for right now but they want you to trim this right next to this row of stitching okay so and then they want you to come back press this seam allowance down Okay, so it holds like that and put in your elastic. Now, the instructions call for three quarter inch elastic. So I went over to my box and realized I do not have three quarter inch elastic. I only have half inch and one inch. And this skirt is actually pretty heavy and I don't trust it to half inch elastic. I'm going to use one inch elastic. But, but, my casing is too narrow for my one inch elastic. So this is what I'm going to do. I showed you what the instructions said. I am going to open up this seam. Okay, I'm going to leave this one, the quarter inch one. I'm going to open up this one and thread my elastic through this very wide seam. All right, so what I did, hang on, let me move my microphone. I think I'm bumping things there. I cut a piece of elastic, my one inch elastic, just at my waist measurement. I am going to be, um, you know, connecting them and everything. But sometimes when I do elastic, I do it slightly smaller, so I have a whole lot of pull. I don't want this to be uncomfortable, and um, if it doesn't hit exactly at my waist, but it wants to come a little bit lower, that's going to be okay too, because it's kind of a free spirit not so tight laced kind of skirt. So let me set my elastic aside here really quick and show you what the waist looks like right now. So here it is. The waistband is of course, or the casing, I should say much wider and I'm going to be able to fit my one inch elastic through there really well. So at this point, all I have though is this one seam at a quarter inch holding it on. And I did press it again, so this seam allowance is pointing down. But what I'm gonna do, just to make sure that everything's gonna stay nice and secure and everything, is I am going to run kind of a top stitching row right across here. Let me write a, get a pen here. Right across here, 
kind of like understitching, but this is sticking out here and that's gonna hold the seam allowance down, give one extra layer of reinforcement. And then once I get that on, um, I'm gonna go ahead and thread my elastic through. Okay, so that is what it looks like. That little extra of stitching, it's gonna hold this little seam allowance down, you know, make it better all the way around. So before I thread my elastic through, this is a very thick elastic, okay? And because it's a thick elastic, I don't want to overlap it. You know, it's gonna add extra bulk and everything in a certain spot. So I'm gonna use a little scrap of fabric to connect them. So before I start threading it through, I'm gonna go ahead and sew just my little scrap of fabric on my sewing machine, make some stitches back and forth here just to get this little piece anchored on. Okay, so that's what it looks like right now. Okay, so it's all attached there. Gonna grab my bodkin here, clip it on, and remember we had our little opening uh, where the seam is right here. Now, this little opening was for a smaller width of elastic, so I'm actually gonna pop open maybe one or two more stitches down here at the bottom, so it's gonna be wide enough for my elastic to fish through. Okay, so now that it is wide enough, I can push my bobbin, my bodkin through and just trying to take my time and be careful that my elastic does not get twisted up as I'm pulling it. So, before I lose track of anything though, I am going to get a pin and just pin my little end down here to my seam allowance so that it will never want to pop up in there when I'm not expecting it. And um, so yeah, I'm just gonna keep working around. All right, so here is my little end that I pulled out this side. So what I'm gonna do is put it, butt it up end to end over my little scrap of fabric here with this guy. Stick a little pin on, go over to my sewing machine. Oops. There you go, had some elastic poking through. And uh, just do a zigzag stitch over this part of the little tab here. Okay, so that's what it looks like, you know, zero bulk and all that. If you want to, you can fold the edges under and stitch along the edge if you want to. Um, if you want to, you can trim it off. I'm just gonna leave it as is. This is just gonna naturally wanna pop together as I pull it into my waistband here, so. All right, she popped in now, and I'm just making sure everything is good there. What I'm gonna do is just with the needle and thread, come back here and whip stitch this little opening closed. Then stretch my elastic band. Try to get it all kind of uniformly settled in there. And I hate elastic waistbands that curl. It's, it's just so annoying. So what I'm gonna do is come back and like every other seam, I might even do every seam, I don't know, where these panels are coming together, I'm just gonna run a little straight stitch straight in here over the elastic just to hold it in place, you know, at those points so that it's never gonna be tempted to curl over. So Just like that. All right, so the last thing I need to do is work on the hem. So remember, my black pieces are a little longer because of my ironing out of order. But what I'm just gonna do is just kind of eyeball it. I can tell it's about two inches here, about two inches there. It's a full skirt, you know. We can just kind of eyeball this cut all the way across even it up over here and I'm just going to do that for all of these panels. All right so this is the inside. I've got it all evened out and I can tell you I just held this up to me and it's a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. So instead of having like that much room from the floor it's going to be pretty much her length but you know taking off four inches I have shorter legs so there you go. 
Um, it is very curved at the bottom, so I need to either make a very, very narrow hem or do some kind of alternate treatment to be able to incorporate that curve. And because it's so long and I don't want to trip over this, I'm going to do things a little bit different. What the instructions want you to do is just fold it up and fold it up again, okay? I'm going to make a larger hem. I'm going to make it probably a couple inches just because I was not expecting it to be this long. But in order to be able to make a wide hem on a very curved, it's almost like a circle skirt at this point, I need to do a couple things. But the first thing I'm going to do is serge all the way around the bottom so that I have these edges here nice and secure. And while I'm serging it, I'm going to make sure that I keep my seam allowances folded in the way that they're supposed to be. So here is my edge. It's surged around now, so nothing's going to unravel. So what I need to do is think of a way to do a very, very slight easing or gathering so that I can turn this up easily. All right, just a very slight amount. I have done in the past stretch lace, which is fabulous. Love that. And red stretch lace would look gorgeous on here. Um, finger easing, where you put your finger behind the presser foot and it just kind of adds a little bit of fullness and that works too. But I want to do something different. Um, if you have an old machine and you've got one of these, I'm going to use this. This is actually a little gathering foot. They're so fun. This is for my old singer. It's got a short shank here. And I just ran a little sample to see how it would work on the flannel. And you have to kind of play with it if you're, if you're going to use it. The amount of gathers will change based on your stitch length. And I found also my thread tension. And if I set my thread tension a little bit looser than normal, you know, and as I sew, I guide it from the back. I get an amount of easing built in, which should be just about perfect for turning up my hem. If you set your stitch in, in, you know, every machine is different and every fabric is different, so you have to play with it. But if I set my tension as normal and I have a long stitch length, I can get really intense gathers, you know. They're fun. I love these old attachments. So I'm going to pop this on my machine, if I can speak correctly here, and I will just show you how I am doing it to get the amount of easing that I need to do my edge here. Okay, I just checked and my bobbin is still pretty full because this is going to be an extremely long seam and the last thing I want is my bobbin to run out halfway. So I'm going to set it so that the edge of this foot is going along the surged edge of my fabric. I'm setting my thread tension less, a couple, couple numbers less than it normally is. So it was on four. I have it at two. And I have my stitch length fairly long at this point. And as I sew, if I want a whole lot of gathers, I don't tug or pull or whatever in the back. I just kind of push it in and it makes intense gathers. I want it to move through smoothly, so I'm not tugging it, but I am going to guide it so it moves through fairly regularly um, using my front and my back. Okay, so here we go. And when I come to where my seam is, you know, just pop it up over the little ridge of my seam allowance so it'll just keep going. And this foot works because one side of it is slightly lower than the other side. So it feeds through as if you were doing that finger easing stuff. Okay, so I have enough here I think we can see. Now when I set my thread tension as less, it also makes it easier so if I need to adjust these it's easier to adjust okay I can just kind of work it down but you can see I can kind of guide it work all whatever extra I need so I have just enough gathers here oopsie so I have just enough gathers here so that when I fold it 
it's going to work out. So I can't, once I have all of this done, I'll show you this up on the table. Okay, so I have it all gathered-ish around the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I want a two inch hem. The floral strips are rectangles, so I'm not going to worry about any gathers being in the rectangle part. If there's any there, I'm going to push them over so they're only in the black part. And I want, oh, I'm going to say a two inch hem, okay? So I'm just going to stick a little pin here in dead center, and I'm going to go ahead and mark and pin the hem on all of my rectangle parts first. Because it's me, um, I have my old measuring tape that I keep taking pieces off every now and then. I just cut a two inch piece off of it because that is easier and I can just eyeball it extremely quickly, putting my little piece on and moving it. Okay. So at this point I have all of my little rectangles pinned up at two inches. Okay. And I know it is black on black, but hopefully you can see that my little hem area just is naturally wanting to curve itself in. Oh, difficult to see, I know, sorry about that. But it is kind of gathered and everything. So what I'm gonna do is at the very center point, pin it up at two inches also, and at a halfway point, okay? So one here, and one here. I'm not actually going too crazy with spacing out my little easing gathering stitches yet. Okay, so now that I have these three points set, now I'm just going to make sure I can run my fingers across. Everything's going to want to stay nice and flat-ish for when I'm sewing. Now right here, I don't know if you can even see, I have a little gap right here, so I need more easing there. So I am just going to pinch and move some over from an area that I don't need it as much. Right here is not bad, right here is fine. So now it's just like, you know, adjusting gathers. So now there's enough here that I can, you know, place it flat. I need to adjust those still, so don't judge it too harshly yet. Um, I can iron this flat and sew straight across. If you're working on a section and there's just too many gathers all the way around, you just gathered it way too much, there is absolutely nothing wrong with once you kind of have it uh, pinned in place to clip that tight thread. You know, whether it's on your top, your bottom, the one that's tighter, clip that and then you'll have enough room to just spread it out. But I would not clip it until you've gone through every section and pinned it, just to make sure that, you know, you have everything worked out. But that's perfectly acceptable, it works great. Once I have the entire skirt pinned up like this, I'm gonna iron it so it's nice and flat, so these little easing gathers are kind of set in. And then I am just gonna do a straight stitch over the edge. So my hem is all done. You know, I have a seam on this side, but it's black, it doesn't show. On here it's so busy, it's not a big deal. On the inside, that's what it looks like, you know. I think it's gonna be nice and secure. And for a free spirit skirt, I think it'll be great. Now I can tell you by hemming it up two inches, I think it's gonna get a lot closer to my intended final skirt length. And it has more body at the bottom, so I like that. Now let's see what it looks like. Okay, a bit Pepper. This is Pepper, a titty bitty. So here it is. We are having an amazingly warm spring-like day. It's not even spring, it's technically still winter and I am loving it and I'm out here barefoot just celebrating because this skirt is exactly what I needed to like cleanse my palette of all sewing difficulties and it's so comfortable and it just makes you feel like 
like you're a hippie and nothing matters. You know what I mean? And so I hope you enjoy it. There is a blouse that I am going to be making next time that will kind of go with this. It'll be more of the same fabrics and everything. I think that that will be lovely for springtime. But yeah, um, the one thing, you know, don't do what I do is iron your fabric before you cut it out. If it's something that's gonna stretch out like my flannel because, um, you know, I had that extra length. But if you don't and you have the extra length, just trim it off like I did, you know, cause that's not that much of a big deal. But anyway, I'm gonna celebrate our warm sunny day and just chill. So I hope you like the video. See you next time. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. New colored life, free every city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and some spin, and will the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red bars, green pastures, beautiful firehouses. The view I see each day when I arrive. This light pleases me, as it is plain to see, I'm living my bucolic life.